Hi, Bobcats. In this video, we're going to see where the average atomic mass comes from. This is the number that we'll find in the periodic table that has the decimals after it. Our first objective is to briefly review average weighted averages. Um, that's, for instance, the way your grade is calculated in this class. Um, and then we also want to calculate the average atomic mass of an element, which is a, an example of a weighted average, um, where the weight factors are the natural abundances of each isotope. As an example of a weighted average, I'd like to um, calculate the average mass of a member of this group. Let's say that we're putting together um, a group of people that consists of little kids that each weigh about 50 pounds and football players who each weigh about 250 pounds. Well, if we have a 50-50 mix so that um, the um, half of the members of this group weigh 50 pounds and half of the members of this group weigh 250 pounds, we could calculate this average simply by taking 50 plus 250, which is 300, and then dividing that by 2, which would give us 150. But if our group consisted of more little kids than football players, we'd expect that mass, that average mass to drop. If our sample consisted of more football players than little kids, then we would expect it to be bigger than 150. So um, let's take a look on the next slide at a specific example of how we would um, calculate the average weight in a situation like that. Okay, let's say that we had a sample that was 75% kids, and again, each kid weighs 50 pounds, and 25% football players, and each football player weighs 250 pounds. Okay, so what does that percent mean? The percent means out of 100. So if we had 100 people, 75 of them would weigh 50 pounds, and 25 of them would weigh uh, 250 pounds. The way we would calculate an average is we would add up the weight of each individual person, divide that by the total number of people. So in this case, out of 100 people, 75 of them weigh 50. So we could do 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50, 75 times. Or we could shorten that and just say 75 times 50 to add up the masses of all the kids. For the football players, we could take 250 plus 250 plus 250 plus 250, a grand total of 25 times, or we could just shorten that and say 25 times 250. And then since there are 100 people, we need to divide the whole thing by 100. And if I run this through my calculator, let's see, I'm going to have 75 times 50 plus 25 times 250, which gives me a total of 10,000. And then I'm going to divide that by 100, uh, which gives me a final value of 100 pounds. So the average weight of this group of people would be 100 pounds. Well, I'm going to show you um, one little math trick that we do on this calculation to get these numbers into the form that you will normally see for the average atomic mass calculation. When you have a sum in the numerator of a fraction, you can break that down into two separate fractions. So we can separate this into 75 times 50 over 100 plus 25 times 250 divided by 100. That's still going to be equal to 100 pounds if you run those numbers through your calculator. But the reason I broke it apart was I want to um, pre-calculate part of this. I want to take the abundance, which is the 75% and the 25%. I want to go ahead and divide through by the 100. So 75 divided by 100 is 0.75. We're going to still multiply that by 50. And then 25 divided by 100 will be 
We're still multiplying that by 250. And if you run that through your calculator, you will still get 100 pounds for the answer. Um, these numbers down at the bottom, the 0.75 and the 0.25, those are the decimal equivalences of our percentages. So 75% is the same thing as 0.75, 25% is the same thing as 0.25. And normally what we do in calculating average atomic mass is we take the percent abundance, write it as a decimal, multiply it by the mass of each isotope, and then add that up for all of the isotopes. So for calculating this average atomic mass, what are we doing? Well, each element naturally occurs as a mix of isotopes. Each isotope has slightly different, a slightly different mass. And then each isotope also occurs at a different percentage. Some elements occur with really close to 100% of one isotope, and so it'll be like 99.9% .9 of one isotope, and then just a trace of all the others. Um, some others will occur at like a 60-40 ratio. Um, so if we're going to do some sort of a calculation, like in chapter five, where we need to use a mass for the element, the best mass to use would be an average that's weighted by the percent occurrence of the isotopes. And when you go and look at the periodic table, this is the number on the periodic table that has all of the decimal places after it. So let's calculate the average atomic mass for the element neon. It consists of three isotopes, neon-20, neon-21, and neon-22. 91% of the neon isotopes are neon-20, which has a mass number of 20, which means the isotopic mass is very, very close to 20 atomic mass units. So we're just going to use um, the mass number for the mass, even though that's not strictly correct. But if we're going to round it to the nearest whole number, we're, that's the number we're going to get. Since 91% of the atoms have a mass of 20, we would expect the answer in the end to be pretty close to 20. The other two isotopes weigh more, so it's going to be slightly bigger than 20 when we get our final answer. So I'm going to just go ahead and, and mark that prediction. Um, the prediction is that our answer should be just a little bit bigger than 20. So I'm going to mark that as greater than or about equal to 20. So it'll be in that ballpark. Okay, so what are we going to do? We are going to take the occurrence of each one of these isotopes and turn that percent into a decimal. So I'm going to move the decimal two spots to the left, and that's going to give me 0.9092. Um, when I move the second one two places to the left, I have to insert another zero, so it'll be 0 0.0026. And when I move uh, the last isotope's abundance uh, that decimal point two places to the left, I've got to um, insert one more zero as well, 0.0882%. So I'm going to use those abundances times the mass number. So it'll be 0 0.9092 times 20 plus 0 0.0026 times 21 plus 0 0.0882 times 22, whoops, that's a 22. And now I just need to run those numbers through my calculator. 0 0.9092 times 20 plus 0 0.0026 times 21 plus 0 0.0882 times 22. And that is giving me an average atomic mass of 20 0.179 atomic mass units. And I think if you go and look at our standard periodic table, you're going to find that this is just right on the money um, for the average atomic mass of neon. It might be rounded to a different spot, like it might say 20.18, um, but this should be very, very close to what the periodic table says. Just to clarify some of the vocabulary uh, type things that we're working here, um, if, when you're looking at your homework and there's a question in there about isotopes, 
The thing to keep in mind about isotopes is that they have some things that are the same and some things that are different. Uh, the things that are the same will be the atomic number, and the atomic number tells you how many protons there are. And because um, the number of protons equals the number of electrons in a neutral atom, the chemical properties should be the same because chemical properties are all about electrons. So the chemical properties should be the same um, for a, a group of isotopes of an element. But here's what will be different. The mass number will be different, which means that it will have a different number of neutrons and consequently the mass will be different. Because the mass will be different for each one of the isotopes, they will have very slightly different physical properties. When you change the mass, you do have an impact on the physical properties. And one more little roundup of some definitions here. Um, when you uh, hear the word nucleon, nucleon just simply means a particle that is in the nucleus. And since there are only two particles in the nucleus, a nucleon will be either a proton or a neutron. Um, so one way we could use that word would be to say that the mass number tells us the number of nucleons since the mass number tells us the total number of particles in the nucleus or the sum of protons and neutrons. Isotopes have the same number of protons, different numbers of neutrons. Uh, it's the same element with the same chemical properties, but the isotopes will have slightly different masses and slightly different physical properties. To wrap up with our objectives, we wanted to review the concept of a weighted average and then calculate the average atomic mass of an element, which is a weighted average where the weight factors are the abundance of each isotope.